She hasn't answered any of my calls or texts. Something's wrong. I can feel it. I'm trying to build a legacy. Let's get this money. You need somebody to guide you. Duda's got it. We all need to pray for Keisha. Look, bro, I ain't trying to break. What's happening, YouTube and Shy fans? This is going to be my Shy Season 3 Episode 2 trailer review. First episode was really, really good. Keisha is missing, and we're going to check out the trailer for Episode 2 to see if we can figure out what's going on. Now, mind you, if y'all followed me from Power, I'm not quite as versed on the Shy as I was Power. But you know what? A cow being on the train track ain't never stopped the train before, so we're going to still make it happen. But I'm going to need y'all's help in making these reviews pop. So when I miss something or you think something, drop the comment. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications so when I drop videos, you all get them. Follow me on the gram. Send me stories on the gram. We go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. We cover the shy and other TV shows, and we also do a little bit of stock, a little bit of real estate. We do it all on this channel. Let's take a look at the other half of the trailer one more time, and then we'll pick it apart for clues. I need to do something. Back up! Back up! All right, in the first frame, we see what looks to be Kevin's mom holding up her phone, tracking Keisha's location of the phone. And we all know that Keisha left her phone in the bus stop. And it looked like there was a fight altercation because the phone had a cracked screen, yada, yada, yada. She didn't go without a fight. Then we see Kevin looking in Keisha's room, looking at her pocketbook, thinking, man, what in the hell? Look at the look on Kevin's face. We see the mom and Kev and Keisha's new stepmom running down the hall. Is this the police office? I guess we'll find out. Drop me comments what you think. And then we see old Dom being introduced. This is Lala Anthony. Her character name is Dom. She's a businesswoman and she's attaching herself to Emmett because she has entrepreneurial aspirations. She wants to take over and she's going to do it with this, the food business. So you see Emmett talking to her like, let's get this money. And then in turn, she's smiling all in his face. But ladies and gentlemen, you know this is going to be a recipe for disaster. Emmett is still a little young, a little wet behind the ears. He probably thinking that it ain't no woman he can't sprinkle his fairy dust on and grab. And I'm telling y'all right now, Lala going to hurt this man's feelings. And she's probably going to try to snatch this business from underneath him and have him hemmed up. Then we see... Oh, trigonometry Trig, Jake's brother, meeting up for the first time. And you hear Trig saying, Jake, you know, let me get you protection, let me get you this business, yada, yada, yada. Jake is like, I don't need you for that. I got Duda. Now, the thing that we want to know is how are they going to, are, are, is Trig going to let them know that he's the brother? Because from what I understand, Jake thinks that Trig is dead. Is he gonna go in full blast saying, you know what, you need to be back with me, I'm your brother. Um, how's it gonna work? I guess we'll see how that goes. But I don't think Jake gonna take too kindly of it, but we'll see. Then we see Kev and you hear Papa's voice in the background, just basically telling them, you know, we need to all pray. And right now, Kevin is not having it. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope this thing doesn't break up these three because I've loved these three characters together. They build from each other. They have a synergy effect. So hopefully they'll stay together. But, you know, each one of them is starting to become their own man really, really fast. And you know this is about to happen with Kevin because he's torn up about his sister. Then we go in the alleyway with old Rusty Ronnie. And somebody is hemming up people in the alley saying, back up. Now, I couldn't zoom in deep enough, but I think that is Kevin's stepmom. Either that or Officer Tucson or whatever her name is. One of the two, you guys leave me comments. You think that's Kevin's mom that done went and got her a piece? Because I think Kevin's mom got a whole lot of hardcore in her more than what we think. And then you see old Rusty Ronnie, scary ass, backing up, don't know what the hell is going on. She probably went down there and started asking him questions. Then we see them try to flash by real fast and they show Emmett as if they was trying to have you think he was kissing Lala, but that's not Lala, that's old Tiff. And um, she's gonna have her day of reckoning in this season too. Then we see 
Emmett's mother. And who is that that got their big, strong, manly hands rubbing that La Poma on the back of her neck looking like Rudolph on the back of a black person's reindeer back? I don't know, but we'll see. But we know she's gonna have some kind of love affair with what looks to be like a, a Puerto Rican guy. But who is this? Is this Emmett's dad? I doubt it, but it could be. And then we see old trigonometry trig in a bar roughing up somebody. Can't we all just get along? Why is he roughing this man up? What's going on? Did this guy try to approach his supermodel looking babe? And secondly, is Trig getting his money from that woman or did he have a stash that he put somewhere before he went to jail? Leave me comments below. Then this is the telling part, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you know Emmett already sprung. He in the kitchen, in somebody's home kitchen, mind you. This ain't at the restaurant. Looking at Lala's super plastic fake butt. Look at him, just staring at it. Can't take his eyes off of it. As she's in there cooking up them fritters. And you see her got some little blowtorch device with her wedge nails lighting the fire, not only to that food, but probably to Emmett's heart and his little wee-wee. Lighting the fire to all of it. But if he don't watch it, she gonna light a fire to his bottom line and he gonna be stuck without a business. Then we see KL's mom, she just stressing y'all. I mean, you lose your daughter like that that's about to go to college and you don't know what's going on. And she looks to be alone. That's why I think that the lady that was out there in the alleyway with Rusty Ronnie is her wife. And then we see the fellas, they teaming up. They riding the street on their bikes, trying to figure out what the hell is going on with Kev's sister. They, they put out an APB, they on them streets. Then you see them walking up to a door and when they open the door, this clown right here looking like Mick Foley went black is holding a gun in their face. What I'm trying to figure out is what made them go to his house? What makes him significant to the story? Is this the new dude Keisha was dating that we spoke about in my live when I said what dude would have their girl like Keisha catch a bus late night south side of Chicago? And you see Kev got that look on his face like, bro, why you got that gun in my face? So. I guess we'll figure out what's going on. Drop me all your comments on what you think is going on with this next episode. How you liking the story so far. And for all you that hated that strap-on scene, post your comments too. Larry talked all about that. I tried to avoid it, but I couldn't because he wanted to talk about it. Leave me your comments. Don't forget to like the video. Comment, subscribe, go get yourself that life game. Follow me on the gram. Check us out live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 9 p.m. Also, check out my financial videos. We're doing real estate. We do Robinhood, the investing app. Link is all in the video description. And until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.